We can start with this first lesson. The first lesson is about, uh, is a kind of introduction to robotics. Uh, it's a very general one, and uh, toward the end we will go to uh, something that is closer to our, our problem. So first of all, what is a robot? Our, a robot uh, is a device, so it's something that is a mechanical, electronical, uh, things so like that. Uh, that uh, has sensors, so receives data from sensors, so gets uh, some information from, from the external world, and basing on this information, performs a task, moving something. So it's something uh, relevant, uh, the fact that uh, th there are motors and we have to move something. And, uh, okay, we think uh, often about uh, robots uh, as autonomous agents, uh, autonomous uh, entities. This is not true, always. Many robots uh, are called robots, but they are not autonomous. But we will see something about this. So in general, we have uh, something that is a device. We have a kind of perception for this device. And we take a decision about uh, uh, what's happening around. And then we decide what to do. This, for instance, was a head that we made for, for a Triennale exposition uh, a few years ago. And it had to detect people. And once the, people, the person was close by, uh, we decided to tell a story, tell a short uh, uh, story about uh, AI, about artificial intelligence uh, and robotics. But the same uh, framework applies also to another robot like this. So this is uh, uh, it's called a photovore. It's a robot that lives uh, by eating uh, 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 light. So uh, through uh, some uh, solar cells, uh, it charges uh, an internal uh, uh, um, capacitor. And when the capacitor is charged, it's a discharging the capacitor on a, on a motor. Which motor? The motor that brings it either on the left or the right toward the light, because it has sensors that detect the direction of the light. So it lives with light, no batteries in this case. This is another one we are developing together. It's a, a, a robot for autistic children. children. And again, this robot, uh, as uh, some perception, as uh, distance sensors, uh, takes the uh, decisions, uh, and upon uh, the, the, the decision it takes, it makes uh, some actions. So, for instance, uh, uh, it would like uh, it would like to play. It goes uh, toward uh, this uh, uh, child and uh, says, "Okay, please, would you like to play with me?" If the child uh, is gentle and maybe caresses it or embraces it. It's okay, and uh, it reacts by saying, uh, okay, I would like to play with you. If it is not gentle, it happens with this kind of, of children. Uh, it, it has a reaction that maybe I'm afraid, I'm, I go away, or maybe I'm angry. And with red lights, it's doing something strange. And again, it's always the same thing. So perception, decision, and then an action. And this was a, a, a soccer player, a robot soccer player. There is a world championship for soccer, uh, robot soccer. Again, in this case, perception was able to perceive uh, the other robots, uh, the ball and uh, the field, the position in the field, and take a decision. And finally, was able to play uh, a, 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 to play a, a game uh, with a team of other robots. But how do we imagine robots? So robots in general are artificial intelligent uh, entities, intelligent, uh, autonomous, able to communicate, interact, uh, sometimes dangerous. We have seen many, many movies where we have dangerous robots. But uh, all these kind of things uh, are just movies. So these are not true. It's something that uh, happens only in the fantasy of the writers. Robots are, are something different now. Let's start uh, from uh, why they are called the robot. That gives an idea of uh, what is a robot. Robot uh, is a term that was uh, taken by, by a writer uh, for a drama. Uh, 
and means a hard worker. And in the drama, the robots uh, were generated by a scientist uh, uh, to work instead of humans, and so to relieve a human uh, kind from hard work. Um, everything goes well until uh, uh, the daughter of the, of the scientist uh, decides uh, that uh, it's a pity that these robots uh, cannot have emotions, uh, cannot feel their state uh, of uh, uh, slavery. So suggest to have them uh, uh, feeling this, uh, these uh, emotions. And this is uh, uh, damage for everything because uh, robots uh, say, OK, so we wouldn't like to be a slave. We would like to be free. So kill all the humans, including Rossum, including they are, they are the only person that was able to keep them al alive. So at the end of the drama, everything, everybody dies uh, as in a Shakespeare <laughs> drama. And OK, this was uh, yeah, coherent uh, with, uh, with the situation uh, in those years, uh, we, are, we were just about uh, at the end of the First World War, and uh, the, the situation was critical in all Europe. Uh, and, uh, every, everybody were, was very pessimistic. But this was successful, and uh, OK, the name robot started to enter in the fantasy of writers uh, until uh, uh, Isaac Asimov uh, took uh, this name as a basic of uh, some uh, uh, discipline, which is robotics, in a, in a novel. And uh, it says, OK, there are robots, artificial entities, that have to uh, satisfy uh, three laws of robotics. Three laws of robotics, uh, then augmented with a low zero, that uh, started to uh, uh, influence uh, all writing uh, in science fiction in, uh, many, for many, many years uh, from then, uh, introducing philosophical uh, uh, issues uh, in, uh, in writings, uh, which are very, very interesting. Briefly, the laws are, are these ones. Uh, so a robot may not harm humanity, or by inaction allow humanity to come to harm. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm, except when this would conflict with the previous law. So a robot must obey the orders. So a robot is still a slave, should obey the orders. And a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the previous laws. So, uh, the robot uh, in this idea is uh, a kind of a slave again uh, that can uh, uh, try to survive, but uh, should obey to humans and uh, possibly do not harm humans. This is uh, the first robot in the movies uh, that was uh, uh, designed to protect the daughter of the scientist, which actually was, uh, who actually was then protected by a nice uh, uh, star trooper guy, and so the robot was useless. But anyway, this was the first time that we had a robot in a, in a movie. The hard reality is that uh, no robot can, can satisfy these laws, so uh, because uh, no robot up to now is able to understand what the, the, do the, this, uh, this law means, and um, even if they could understand that they are not able to detect the right action to, to satisfy, to follow them. But we have a lot of robots. Robots are used as tool aids to do tasks in support of people or instead of people when this is dangerous, maybe is, or is too heavy for people. Most robots have no autonomy or a short or small autonomy, just a few uh, autonomous uh, abilities, and repeat their movements. Many of them are tele teleoperated, but some are autonomous. The development for the next future is that, uh, uh, as I said uh, here, 
Uh, I can envision a future where in which robotic devices will become a nearly ubiquitous part of our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, this was said by Bill Gates a few years ago. And this is uh, something that is happening in the market now. In 2005, we had uh, uh, some industrial robots working in, in uh, production plants. We have uh, some robots uh, used in space and safety, and some service robots. This is the first year where the last two overcome the first uh, in, for number and uh, market uh, share. And then things went like this. So we have a little bit of uh, crisis uh, around uh, these years. And this is the expectation for industrial robots, for space and safety, and finally for service robots. So service robots are expected to explode uh, in the next years uh, in uh, somebody says a trillion euro market. These are the industrial robots. Industrial robots uh, repeat uh, in always the same things, uh, but uh, these things uh, are something that we would like to avoid. So we would like to avoid uh, to uh, solder, move uh, heavy things, uh, and everything uh, that is uh, uh, hard to do uh, can be done uh, by, by robots. And uh, we have also situations like this. This is... Uh, the, oh, sorry, that's not, uh, not so clear. It's uh, the, the storage uh, for Amazon. Amazon, both uh, a, a, a company for $700 uh, million. Dollars. Uh, everything is managed by, by robots that go around, take the uh, shelves, uh, and bring the shelves uh, to the operator which does the, uh, the only thing that is uh, difficult for a robot, uh, so taking things uh, from the shelf uh, and packing them. So this is uh, uh, done here. In this way, the robot uh, is rising uh, the shelf and then is taking it away. So the, the storage is uh, dynamic, everything changes. Um, they, they move uh, in streets and then they have highways. This is a little bit accelerated. Uh, the idea is that uh, we have these uh, robots, uh, this is taken by, from, from an interview, we have this robot that can do something like that. So make it possible to have uh, the person having the right things at the right moment to put uh, in, the, in the package. And this is done actually like this. So the robots come there. You see up there that uh, here we have a, a, an operator filling uh, the, the things, uh, and then everything is returned into storage. So these are industrial robots. Uh, they are programmed to repeat uh, always the same action. Uh, sometimes they are teleoperated. They work in environments that do not change. So everything is always the same. They are accurate, uh, fast, uh, and reliable, and run without failures for a long time. They are industrial products. So they should work because production should go on. They are expensive. They cost a lot. Second section of the market uh, is uh, uh, safety. Uh, safety means military. So we have uh, uh, automatic uh, um, vehicles. Unmanned vehicles, actually, both flying uh, or in, uh, on the ground uh, or uh, also on sea. Uh, we have uh, robots for exploration. Uh, that, that one was an Italian one for exploration in the Antarctica. Uh, this for exploration in volcanoes. And this was exploration on Mars. Uh, most of them are uh, not autonomous. They are teleoperated. Uh, the autonomy in the uh, UAV or UAG, unmanned uh, vehicles, uh, is mostly dedicated to follow a target, to reach a target. But uh, the, the person is always deciding what to do with his target. So there is always a person taking the decision of killing people. And here we had uh, a first example of autonomy 
in a far space, uh, in Mars, uh, we had this robot uh, that was going uh, uh, on this path uh, to, to detect uh, something uh, on the ground, and it was teleoperated from Earth. But teleoperation takes uh, eight minutes to give a comment and eight minutes to give back things. And when this uh, came uh, close to a, a big uh, stone, uh, they took something like a uh, few weeks uh, to move it away from the stone. So the second one was uh, uh, programmed so to have some autonomy to overcome this kind of problems. So obstacles were avoided automatically. And this is uh, an automatic uh, autonomous vehicle done here at Politecnico by our lab and the, the automation lab, the Merlin lab. Uh, it works uh, automatically by taking information from sensors. It brings uh, also a, a quadricopter. It is uh, uh, intended to, to serve as a basis for the quadricopter that has a very short range in order to uh, detect uh, things that are around. So you can uh, launch the quadricopter and see from the quadricopter what happens. And also as a camera on board. But everything uh, is done uh, autonomously. Uh, you can take the control of the vehicle, but uh, it is able to reach uh, a target uh, uh, by deciding uh, its own way. And this is the vision from the quadricopter. This is another vehicle. It's a bi-inspired transporter. It's partially autonomous in the sense that it's able to manage uh, the, the, the problems it may have with the, with the ground. In this case, you see snow. Uh, then in, in a moment, you will see ice. Uh, here is on ice. You see that it's able to manage to stay also on ice. This is a quite old uh, uh, movie as, uh, since a uh, few years. Uh, now the same kind of things uh, are much smaller. They are different size. Uh, some are very small and can run uh, up to 100 km per hour. Uh, others are small and can go around uh, also in offices. Others are very big and can bring a lot of uh, weight around. These were designed uh, to bring weight uh, in uh, uh, strange uh, situations, in, uh, in places where it's difficult uh, to have uh, uh, vehicles with wheels. All the other robots uh, are for service, uh, and these are the ones that will uh, uh, increase uh, their, uh, their presence on the market in the next uh, years. Uh, we have home appliances, uh, we have uh, health care, we have entertainment, and some of these kind of things. So we have uh, things like uh, these uh, cleaners. These are more or less autonomous, it depends on the cleaner. Some of them have a camera to decide where to go. Others are just going until they reach a wall and then go back. Uh, so they go more or less randomly. Uh, the same uh, applies for, uh, for uh, these uh, lawn mowers, where we have uh, the person that is enjoying uh, his newspaper instead of uh, uh, cutting grass. Uh, and there is a, a nice robot that is cutting grass for, for him. So that's, uh, that's OK. And also the, the washing machine there is uh, maybe something that is not uh, like a robot, but it is a robot because uh, many of these uh, appliances now are taking decisions uh, upon uh, something that they are able to detect. So they, there are uh, washing machines uh, that have just the start button and uh, they are able to detect what is inside and decide the program to wash uh, things uh, appropriately with the program. Healthcare. We have uh, surgery robots. They are very uh, precise and they are teleoperated. You see here the surgeon, here the robot, and here should be the patient. Uh, this is uh, just to recall you that you have the possibility to see the nice uh, uh, 
uh, trying um, experiments that they, they do to train uh, the, the surgeon, they have to peel a, a grape uh, with these uh, uh, tools uh, that are usually inside uh, your belly or inside your body. So in order to train, uh, you have to reach the ability to keep the peel, cut the peel, keep the peel and peeling, the, the, this kind of thing. I, it's, uh, it's something that uh, is uh, nice. But they are teleoperated. Then we have prosthesis. Uh, they are usually body-driven. So the sensors, in this case, take uh, information from uh, the neural or the muscular activity of the body and uh, are moving uh, parts uh, that are missing uh, in the bodies of somebody, as in this case here. We have this guy that has lost uh, both arms and uh, it can control with the muscular activities of the, of the chest uh, the uh, movement uh, of the arm, which is actually a, a quite complex robot. And so it's able, he is able to, to do things uh, like this and gains uh, again uh, uh, the ability to be, uh, to, to, to do things uh, autonomously at home. And then we have uh, robots for rehabilitation, uh, for, uh, for instance, bringing people around, uh, such as uh, with the autonomous wheelchair, or uh, this kind of things uh, that can uh, uh, be put on uh, if you are not able to uh, drive your muscles of the, of the legs uh, and use that to recover possible injuries uh, for, uh, for neural problems, and this kind of things are around. Let's go to entertainment. Entertainment, we have toys and games, a lot of toys and games. Uh, every Christmas we have uh, even more toys and games that refer uh, as, uh, as uh, robots. Uh, a lot of them, uh, they, they can be teleoperated or autonomous and they have to support a game activity that engage the user. So we would like to have the user engaged uh, in some activity, which is interesting. So on the right, you see there, one of the robots we use have to develop games. We, de we are developing games uh, since a few years also in our lab. And on the left, uh, you see something that was announced uh, uh, a couple of years ago as the new revolution for robotics uh, at the, the Apple uh, uh, developer conference from the Apple CEO, uh, and uh, in this case we have a uh, car, autonomous cars uh, that can run on this uh, uh, track uh, freely, autonomously, taking decisions, uh, and you can take the control of one of the cars with an iPhone, but the others uh, still run. So it's a video game in the reality. We may have robots for exhibitions which may be autonomous or teleoperated. Uh, we have these uh, uh, robots that uh, should engage the user, so should tell tales, uh, should tell stories about uh, the exhibition, but uh, then you, they, they have to keep the attention of the user uh, active. Um, uh, on the right, again, we have something that we have developed uh, and we will see as a, an example later. And on the left, uh, one of the many robots that are used in, uh, uh, mostly in technical museums. And then we have companions, which is the goal of this course. Companions uh, that should be autonomous, uh, helpful, engaging. Uh, we will talk about uh, this in a, in a moment. Uh, they are the most difficult thing to, to, to do in this uh, field for the moment. So companions, what we have as companion? We may have uh, pet robots, so robots that are considered as pets, and you are interact interacting with these robots as pets. We have there, uh, on the left, we have Paro. Paro is a baby seal. It has very many sensors on the body. You can uh, caress, so you can uh, move, uh, interact with a touch with this. This is uh, moving, 
a little bit. It's not uh, running, it's not going around, but it's moving the head, it's making smiles, and this kind of things. It's humming, doing some uh, noise, uh, something like that. And it's engaging uh, old people or uh, also autistic children. It's used in many therapies as a pet which is uh, uh, reliable and uh, uh, easy to, 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 to find uh, reactions. So it's not something that do something unexpected. It does something that is always expected. Now here we have Furby. Furby, you may know Furby. It's uh, again something that evolves uh, uh, with the interaction. And then we have uh, one of the versions of uh, Aibo, which was uh, a product uh, of some years ago. Uh, now it has been dismissed because, uh, because of the market. So this, this uh, stuff here costed something like uh, $2,000. And they did something very similar to the one that we have there that last Christmas was around 479. From the user point of view, it's more or less the same. And so it's true that this is a lot of technology more than that one, but for the user point of view, it's not a viable product. Something else are assistive robots which are intended to bring some assistance uh, to elderly, to uh, people. Uh, assistance in many senses, uh, help uh, at home, uh, help a child or play with child, uh, bring things. Uh, and we have a lot of stuff uh, like, uh, more or less like this. Uh, they are not satisfactory for the moment. So they are doing things uh, which are not uh, related with the cost uh, they, they have for the moment. Here we have uh, an example of the evolution. This is a, a product that comes from a European project, from a set of European projects, actually. This is the third version. It was expected to go around uh, at home with an arm, which is actually an industrial arm. So something very big, heavy, as uh, about uh, 200 kilograms, and uh, okay, you see, this is the shape of this uh, object, uh, and the new version is this one. A little bit changed, a little bit changed, and we will see them moving. Uh, they are uh, doing uh, uh, interesting things. Another kind of uh, emerging companion, which is a strange one, uh, is this kind of things. So things that you can, can put on the shoulder like, like a bird. In this case is, a, is a, a person, but we have seen a bird at Maker Fair. But let, let's see a little bit uh, what uh, is a robot, what is inside a robot. So what, what, how can we make a robot? We take uh, this uh, robot as an example. This uh, robot has uh, sensors, uh, uh, kind of mind. Uh, and the body. This robot is intended to go in exhibitions, go around an exhibition, uh, look for people, go closer to the closer face uh, you can recognize, talk with these people by uh, detecting uh, the, the movement of these people. If people is nodding, saying like that, uh, is uh, showing interest. So if, it sh it, if, if the person is showing interest, uh, uh, the robot asks uh, to follow it uh, for, uh, to, to, to the booth of the company. So it's bringing people around in the in exhibition and bringing people to the booth, to the stand of the company. Uh, this is the aim of the robot, and this is what it does, uh, actually. But we will take this uh, an, as an example of uh, how a robot can be done. Uh, the sensors. So we have the three aspects, uh, which are sensors, uh, mind, and body. Sensors. Sensors provide data relevant uh, to support the task performance. So uh, what we need uh, when we talk about sensors uh, is the information that uh, we need actually to perform a task. So if we have a task, we define a task, then we 
understand what we need to understand from the external world, and we have to have the sensors uh, able to provide this data. And uh, uh, this means uh, word modeling. So detect things, uh, recognize things, uh, conceptualize things. Uh, so try to uh, uh, elaborate this data in order to have uh, a conceptual vision of the world, a conceptual idea of the world. Uh, Self-localization, knowing where you are. Uh, something about the internal status, uh, starting from batteries, but then uh, from uh, other position of the body and everything. Uh, the action, so say, decide the action, and the interaction. So sensors are supporting all these kind of things. Uh, and actually, they are the channel we have uh, to take information from the external world. In this uh, uh, robot, we have a Kinect. Do you know what is a Kinect? Kinect is a device uh, used for, uh, for games uh, that has a camera, as a, a, a device uh, used to detect the user playing in front of, uh, of this uh, and in front of a screen. And while the user is moving, uh, Kinect is able to detect uh, the movement of the user and to provide also a, a 3D uh, image of what is in front. So it gives uh, the distance of each pixel. Instead of having pixels with colors, you have pixels uh, with a distance. So at each, uh, each position, you have a distance. And this is a product. It's very cheap. And it is used for gaming, so it's not used uh, for robots, although many people is using that, ro that product for robots. So we have a Kinect. It is used for self-localization, mapping, and interaction. Self-localization and mapping because it provides this distance to objects, so it's possible to detect the distance to the walls and the other elements of the environment, and from them you can build a map and know where you are. And uh, for interaction, because uh, it's detecting, it's used to detect the movement of people and how people is uh, interacting uh, by, by the gesture of, uh, of people. Then we have sonars. Sonars uh, are used uh, to measure the distance uh, from given directions. And so these uh, are tools uh, used uh, to uh, get uh, the uh, distance from something that we don't know exactly. They are used uh, for safety reasons. Uh, if uh, the Kinect fails, uh, at least we are sure we are not hitting a wall, or hitting a person. We, are, uh, we keep a distance to the things. And then we have encoders uh, for uh, the motor rotation, so you know how much uh, you are moving and how you are moving. And we have some information about the battery. And these are the sensors available on board. You might notice that we don't have any microphone because uh, in uh, this kind of environment uh, we couldn't understand uh, anything. So we cannot understand uh, natural language. But we can understand if people is interested or not. And this is enough uh, for, uh, for this task. In general, these sensors uh, provide uh, some uh, uh, electrical coding of some uh, external uh, uh, quantity, some physical quantity. We may have cameras uh, that produce uh, an electrical signal according to the uh, enlightenment uh, of each of their pixels, of each of their component uh, of, uh, of their sensors. Here we have a strange camera. This is an omnidirectional camera that looks on a, on a um, mirror uh, which is uh, up o over the camera there. And so you can see 360 degrees around just by taking a, an image. This is something nice. And the other one is, uh, is a stereo camera providing this uh, uh, triangulation, so the possibility to measure the distance uh, of the object. Then we have uh, distance sensors. You will have distance sensors uh, also. Uh, here is a, sonar, is a laser sensor that is able to take uh, the distance uh, every degree for uh, maybe 270 degrees around, so it's very precise. 
and you can have this kind of maps from this uh, scan. It's possible to have uh, very precise maps. We have uh, other sensors uh, such as sonars or infrared sensors which are less uh, precise but uh, still interesting to detect uh, the distances. Then we may measure acceleration and movements. Uh, this is uh, a device again used for games, uh, but inside we have uh, acceleration and, uh, and uh, movement uh, uh, measurements. Uh, as in our phones, uh, you can move the phone and detect how, how this is moved because uh, uh, you have these this sensors on board. Then we may have pressure and touch, so you can touch and sense the pressure. For instance, uh, we have used that uh, to understand whether our robot for autistic children is uh, caressed or is uh, punched or <laughs> what, what they are doing with our robots. And then we may have uh, also an artificial nose or taste. Uh, we can do strange things uh, with, uh, with robots and many, many kinds of sensors. But once we have information from sensors, we have an electrical signal, which may be analog, so we may have something that changes uh, with time, or maybe a number, so digital. And we have to interpret this information. So this is just a signal, electrical signal. We have to understand what is this. So for instance, we have a camera. A camera, digital camera provides a set of numbers, a matrix of numbers, so we have a rectangular matrix of numbers. And each point, uh, each, uh, each uh, box in the, in the matrix uh, contains three numbers, which are the three numbers that identify the, the color of this point. So the color is identified by, for instance, uh, the quantity of red, blue, and green components of the color. Why red and blue and green? Because in our eyes, we have uh, uh, sensors, uh, which are neuroreceptors, uh, which are sensible to red, blue, and green. So we have done something uh, which is very similar to our own uh, abilities. We may say that uh, we have numbers, so we have to decide what to do with these numbers. So we have a matrix of numbers, so what, what can we do with numbers? We can say, okay, maybe we have similar numbers, a similar set of numbers, and we say these are Similar color, okay. So this can be used to say that we have uh, blobs of uh, the same color or the similar color. Or we may say differences. We see differences, strong differences from one point to the closer point, and this is a line. If you look at these things, uh, you, you have a, in every environment, uh, you have a strong differences of colors, and these are lines uh, which are around. So we can interpret images uh, as lines. And once we have this information, such as color, lines, we can try to understand the shape of the lines, the shape of the colors, associate them to known things about the objects, and so on. at the end we can detect the object and detect possibly the position of the object and then finally understand what's around, what understanding the scene. This is a quite complex process. And once we have this world model, we can decide what to do. For instance, this is an orange ball. And if we take a pixel, so an element of this image, I would say that pixel is identified by a lot of red. 255 is the maximum value for, uh, for uh, this intensity. A lot of red, some green, and no blue. The green possibly comes from uh, the reflection of the field that is around, so this is uh, green. And then this is a little bit darker, but the proportion is more or less the same. This is uh, a little bit more light, and we are losing the proportions, and so it's not uh, the proportion that we have to take to understand the color. And here is again a problem. And here is something that we cannot consider. We, we, when we see this ball and we are asked what is the color of this ball, we say, okay, this ball is orange. We don't take care that there are black things on it. 
but uh, the, the robot, the sensor, detects back things. So it's something that is also relevant and uh, is there. Moreover, when we take the image, we not always have the image as nice as the one that, that we have seen, just seen. We might have images like this, for instance. This is the ball that we see if it is far away. Something very difficult to understand. But we can do something, and we can work on this kind of things. Uh, yeah, we will see some sensors. Uh, later on, so we, you will have the ability to work with them without uh, any problem. Let's go to the body. The body has, uh, is aimed uh, to provide a physical support to perform the task. So again, the main point uh, is a task. What is the task? We decide what is the task and then we take decision about the shape, about the body, about what, what the body is able to do. This means uh, movement, uh, shape, uh, the way you interact, uh, and this kind of things. In this uh, strange robot, uh, we have uh, many uh, elements uh, that are used uh, to uh, produce a kind of emotional interaction. We can move eyes, uh, move eyebrows, uh, move head, move also the neck. And uh, have a lot of movements that are aimed at having an emotional interaction. We have a loudspeaker, so we can talk. And we have motors uh, with omni wheels. Omni wheels are this kind of wheels. Uh, you can see here what is at the very bottom of this robot. There are three wheels. Each wheel has a kind of, uh, of uh, um, small cylinders uh, on the border. So if you take the wheel that goes n normally goes this direction, if you take the wheel and go this direction, it doesn't uh, have any resistance. So you can push also on the side of the, this robot. So you can put uh, these uh, wheels in this way and have a robot that d doesn't need to steer. It can uh, just go like that with no problems of steering. No limitation, it's more free. And this is a choice for the body. And then let's come to the mind. The mind, we have word modeling. Uh, so this means uh, understanding what's coming from the sensors and try to uh, decide uh, what, what is there. So the sensors provide some information and we have to elaborate this information to build a model of the word. Uh, again, a model that is useful to, for the task. This means classify objects, uh, recognize objects, uh, localize objects, uh, track objects, uh, by taking maybe information from different sensors. And this is uh, something that uh, here is uh, made by, for instance, uh, 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 elaborating the image, we can uh, detect the face, uh, detect the movement of the face. Uh, here you see a part of the elaboration. Here we have detected uh, the eyes uh, and the proportion of the eyes, uh, the position of the eyes and the eyebrows uh, in, the, in the face. Uh, and we can detect that the face is doing like that. So it's, uh, if one is nodding, is doing something like that. And this is enough to understand something. Or here we have uh, something for localiz localizing the robot. The robot has a map, uh, and uh, you see here in this, uh, in this uh, here, ha ha ha, here. <laughs> These are obstacles detected, and uh, this is the map uh, that the robot uh, uh, built before. This is uh, where the robot would like to go. And here is a cloud of possible positions of the robot. Since uh, the robot is not sure about its position, is elaborating uh, some information and say, OK, I'm around here. And so as, uh, as uh, far as it detects more things, uh, it can uh, make uh, this uh, estimation more precise. But in general, it's enough uh, to navigate, uh, to go around in this, uh, in this uh, environment and then track people also. 
Then another important thing is that this is the model of the world. We can detect uh, things uh, and understand what's around. Then we have to decide what to do. So what to do is uh, uh, a behavior of the robot. And we can have uh, behavioral models uh, to uh, do the single, the single uh, things that the robot can do. We may have an uh, enabling condition for each uh, behavior opportunity condition, so it is the case to do something or not, and uh, action proposals. For instance, here we have a, a set of uh, possible uh, behaviors for this robot. One behavior would be detect a person, so go around and look for a person. Another one is uh, go to the person. Once I've detected the person, go there. Another one is tell a story. Another one is leave the person because he's not interested. Another one is a company person. Another one is thank the person once we, we have uh, brought uh, the person uh, to the stand. And so these are all possible uh, uh, behaviors which correspond to some pieces of, uh, of uh, software that implement this behavior. And each of them uh, has uh, some uh, uh, conditions that say, OK, if I I'm not facing, if I'm not talking with a person, it's the case to detect a person. But if I'm talking to the person, it is not the case to activate this behavior. So we have conditions that say if it is the case to do the things or not, to do what things or not. And then we have sensors that are providing data. We built our word model. And then from the word model, we can produce information for this uh, activation and for the, 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 the decision that they have to take. And then we compose uh, all this decision and finally we get uh, the action, the final action. So the main cycle is something like that. And this is uh, something that we, we will do also. Planning. Planning is another activity that can be done. Uh, means uh, plan what to do uh, in advance. So we need to know the possible effects of actions. Uh, we need to reason. And uh, then we have uh, to execute the plan and decide uh, whether we are following the plan or if something strange is happening. And here, for instance, we have a situation where we have our robot here that has detected uh, this obstacle, and uh, he has to go here uh, in this position. He knows that, uh, and so he plans uh, to go on a straight line, like this. As it will uh, come close to this person, probably this person had moved, and if, it has, if, if he, he, this person has gone uh, in, in the path, uh, probably this will have to replan and make a turn here, something like that. This is planning. This is, uh, decide what to do because I have a goal to reach, and then upon the goal, uh, check uh, if the goal is, uh, is uh, achieved or not. Finally, uh, at the end we will have a robot with a character. So the aim of the co this course is to have a character for this robot. Uh, because uh, these robots uh, are uh, uh, robots uh, that are entering a society, uh, they will interact with people, they share the life with people. And uh, uh, if you share the life with things like this, uh, uh, probably after a while you are bored and you say, okay, who cares about these robots? So I'm not interested about them. Uh, it's clear that uh, a robot is a robot, it's not a human being, it's not a pet, it's not a, 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 a biological entity, but uh, uh, it is interesting if we can recognize in the robot something that we can uh, appreciate. Uh, this kind of robots uh, with all these uh, expressions uh, are more interesting than this kind of robots where you cannot have anything. And so this is the way we, we will uh, uh, go in this uh, in this course. Some uh, examples uh, we, you may have seen already 
from this, the website, uh, where you see that uh, uh, here we have many objects, uh, and we will have also a robot. Uh, and uh, you see that uh, also uh, without any, any noise, uh, without any sound, uh, you can uh, get some feeling from this robot uh, by the way it's moving. Hmm? So uh, this is one of the goals uh, we will have. So he, he is able, it is able to interact with people. In this case, uh, it was stable, but uh, it's always moving. If it is not moving, uh, it's uh, an object, it's nothing. It becomes alive in the moment uh, it's uh, moving and is uh, uh, somehow uh, doing gestures uh, that are useful for interaction, to make interaction uh, interesting apart from the, what happens on the screen. Here is telling a tale and saying, okay, yes, uh, yo. Then something happens on uh, this, uh, where are you? And, okay, find it. This is another one. You probably have seen it, uh, but I would like to point out uh, the interest of this simple thing. So this, uh, this is just, uh, uh, a useless box, uh, it's a useless machine. You have to turn it on, uh, off, uh, and turn it off, uh, and on, uh, and so. You see, something is happening there. Uh, at, at this point, uh, I would be bored, but okay, this changes. So the interesting thing is that uh, something is changing, it's introducing a surprise, it's doing uh, something new, which is uh, interesting because uh, it's uh, uh, challenging the person, not too much, but it's still uh, uh, doing something that is not uh, just boring, just the same thing. And then, okay, final surprise, this is a white uh, flag and say, okay, I surrender, but I, anyway, I close that. And uh, here is another example of uh, the shape of the body and the movement also. How much uh, these are important uh, to determine a character, to see a character. This is a robot bash. You see this robot, this is uh, very aggressive. And this one uh, is not very aggressive. And uh, this is a uh, robot wars. It's, uh, uh, an actual competition, this is a, a, an, adver an advertisement, of course, but I will see what happens at the end. So, uh, this is a surprise, but let, let's see again uh, uh, and try to understand what's happening from the emotional point of view. You have the impression uh, of this guy, which is very, very uh, dangerous. And this is nothing, as uh, often it's also. Uh, tilting a little bit as a problem in moving, but uh, as a surprise, and this is, uh, notice the, the time of the surprise, so it's moving, this kind of thing. Everything is changing, it's nice, it's clean inside, it's uh, something very different. And then the final surprise, of course, so this is uh, just uh, an animation, not possible, <laughs> this kind of things, but uh, <laughs> it's interesting. And the last one uh, uh, is uh, uh, Plio. Plio is, uh, is uh, a robot that can uh, move a little bit. Uh, notice uh, the kind of movement. So it's uh, always a very smooth movement. Uh, here is a little bit more nasty. It's, uh, reacting to sensors that is uh, here and doing uh, uh, things. It's not uh, such, uh, such uh, unexpected or such uh, strange or such uh, different. So after, after an hour you have uh, experienced everything you can do with, with, with Plio. But anyway, it's something that can be uh, 
uh, interesting to see uh, at least a little bit. Of course, uh, it can stop here. But it has some problems on the back, uh, if it goes on the back. So when you are here, you can go back, uh, just lose uh, any possibility to be real, to be understood as a real. In general, we, we have also different materials and solutions and situations. Uh, here is a robot that goes around. It, this stays on, on, on the desk. This goes around on the desk. Uh, this uh, doesn't move, move uh, only the head and the, and the arms a little bit. Uh, this is as a face, uh, it's moving a face uh, and doing this kind of things. Uh, so there are different situations uh, that where you can play with these companions. And we have different materials. Uh, most of these kind of things uh, are plastic, but some are fur, some are uh, foam, some are different kind of things. And some have uh, pre-programmed things uh, like this one. This is uh, moving a little bit to these parts uh, and uh, can dance, uh, can uh, talk with you, uh, can say these kind of things, uh, more or less like that one. Uh, here you have uh, a phone on top, uh, and so you can have any program on the phone. You have just the things that is moving, is perceiving something, and you can do a lot of things because of this uh, uh, power on board. And then we have uh, something about uh, the function. Uh, all these robots uh, have a function. Uh, this should bring things, uh, this uh, should bring people, this uh, should clean, uh, this uh, should help people, this should uh, interact with people. And this is the function. And then uh, we need uh, or we may want uh, to have a mood for these robots. A mood that means, uh, okay, uh, if I see this one, uh, I don't feel uh, any sympathy for this one. I say that the strong one is doing something maybe strange, but uh, it's not uh, something I, I feel uh, in, in agreement. With this one, I feel uh, automatically in agreement. With this, this is neutral, but if it is the wheelchair where I live uh, for all my day long, maybe it would be interesting to have something more than just a wheelchair there. And also this, uh, I, I would like to really to see a, a, a cleaner like this so that when I go back home and say, okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't finish my room. Can I go on, please? Or something like that. Hmm? Could be more interesting than just having this stuff going around. An important thing is that uh, you should enjoy interacting with, uh, with your robot. It's, uh, it's important because uh, otherwise the market will not accept the robot. It should be interesting. So this is a, an example of a companion, one of the things that we have seen before. This is an official presentation. You can see from the official presentation what is the approach for this companion. This is this, uh, this object. As household assistant, as as a German product, of course, and you see as uh, having this uh, tablet uh, going around, but also these people, you you can feel these people, this person, which is one of the, the of the designers, that is not feeling comfortable close to this robot. You see that is big enough. Uh, this arm is very heavy. The robot is doing something, of course. Uh, uh, but it's very, very slow. It's, uh, it's something that uh, is not really useful. And it costs uh, something like uh, 200,000 uh, euros. But the same uh, project, uh, the same uh, set of projects, uh, so the same uh, company, let's say, is, uh, is doing uh, the next step. Uh, and this is the presentation for the new one, which is not yet ready, but uh, this is a uh, at least the presentation, and you may notice from the presentation the kind of approach and the kind of robot. This is a different robot. 
As, uh, you may notice here the safety button in the front and the back. You can always push the safety button to stop the robot. Uh, OK, this is just a presentation, but gives you an idea of. Uh, notice this uh, uh, unfunctional movement while it's going, but uh, is uh, somehow showing uh, some uh, emotional uh, uh, recall, some something. And then finally, OK, I was going to give this rose uh, to the user, and he's happy, she's happy, and OK, yes. Maybe too much, but OK. <laughs> oh, he is happy. Notice the shape, the kind of movement, the kind of uh, smooth movement, but at the same time, something that uh, you notice also this kind of uh, movement, uh, smooth uh, movement. So we can engage the person, have a role. So a relationship, you can have a pet, a butler, a friend. We have to decide what is. Uh, the companion with respect to this person. And uh, if we would like to have uh, uh, this companion for a long time, uh, we should be able also to uh, have a surprise for this, <laughs> or by changing things, uh, or being able to do many things. So this is not the case uh, of any robot. Uh, this, for instance, uh, is a very, very nice robot. You, you may have uh, this uh, movie also on the, on the website. Uh, but it's just uh, uh, moving uh, for the music. So after a while, you say, OK, this is dancing. OK, nice. That's all. <laughs> OK, so at the end, uh, these are robotics companions. Uh, if they are products, uh, they have uh, being designed for the user, being uh, uh, robust, uh, cost effective, and this is very important, uh, easy to build and maintain. And how to do this kind of thing, so we will see a little bit uh, in this course. So we will try to do something following these kind of things. So that's all for the, this presentation. Uh. <laughs>